Hi everyone, it's Joe here from Lawn Solutions Australia and welcome to another episode of Turf Talk where it's Bring an Expert to Work Day. Who's that? <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> we're, we're joined by uh, Better Homes and Gardens, Dancing with the Stars. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not not quite a finalist, but I was not on quite that. a finalist, we're close. <laughs> and the owner and founder of Inspired Exteriors, mm-hmm. Charlie Alburn. Charlie, thanks for being on again. Pleasure. So if Charlie's been on here a couple of times, if you want to check out previous episodes, the first one we did, which was one of the first turf talks we did, was a deep dive into your life, your uh-huh. experience, how you got here. And then we spoke a little bit about what you've been up to over the, the last sort of few months uh, and so on. But today is going to be all about the other side of you that people probably don't see as much on TV. Well, they see mm-hmm. parts of it, but you're not just a, a TV guy. Uh, yep. You run and own a landscape design, construction, and maintenance. Well, it's business. gone through a restructure, so it's just okay. design now. But just design. Um, I still make sure I'm still involved with the project from the start. Well, tell us about end. it. Okay, so yep. it used to be uh, design, construction, and maintenance. Yep. But with everything I was doing like last year, it got a little bit crazy mm-hmm. and I needed to kind of work out what I actually enjoyed and what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Managing staff was just becoming my life. Yep. Um, and so I, I restructured it. Um, I got a shareholders agreement with one of the designers I used to work with. So he still works, we still work together. Yep. Designing gardens, my construction manager started his own business and basically builds all our work. So yep. exactly the same. Exactly. And then I, I got rid of maintenance because I found um, I had guys that were working for me that were great, but then say Betty out at wherever she lives would want me to come out and have a look and give my opinion. And I'm like, I'm coming out to tell you, you need to spray for scale. Yeah. And my guys have told you this and yeah. do you really need me to come to this? And it just yeah. wasn't working out. I so think Betty liked you. Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, Betty does make a great cup of tea <laughs> and a slice, but you know, it just wasn't the best use of my time. So yeah. I kind of had to work out what I really enjoyed doing, mm-hmm. which was the design. So mm-hmm. that's kind of what we do. So it, it come from two angles. One, the need to do less. Mm. Uh, and two, that's where your passion really lies with yeah. design. Yeah. Which is a great feeling to kind of work out, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And and it kind of worked towards that, and and it's, it's nice to have a bit more time and do what you enjoy more. So is it just you now? No, no, I've got two designers. So yep. I'm in partnership with one of the guys who used to work for me, and oh, then we've sorry, got yeah. an employee together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. so a job will come on along your desk saying, "Hey, build me a garden." Yeah. Um, and you guys will basically just. Design it. So we do everything from like a consultation where you just turn up and I can give advice on, I think this is where your pool should go. These are some plants that would work. Yep. Everything up to we've got a blank canvas, make us a nice garden. We don't mm-hmm. know what we want. Does that mean you're still just around the Sydney area or does that mean you can go a little bit? We, we work the, everywhere. Like oh, yeah? Yeah. thanks to COVID, people realize you can do these things over the internet. Yeah. So yeah. we've got some designs in Melbourne, some up in Queensland, all yeah. over the place. Yeah, okay. And, yeah. and what's, the, what's the time period for you to put together a garden design? I know it's probably some variables in this, but yeah. pick a standard one. Like how long does it take you to do this? Uh, so from the time we meet someone to producing plans for them mm-hmm. and sitting down and giving them the first presentation could be three to four weeks. Yeah. And then normally there's changes. That takes a couple of weeks and then... It depends if it needs to go through DA or not. You have all the extra documentation that needs doing. If yeah. it's exempt development, then you've got to meet with contractors or show it to contractors. So you've got to do that council side of things too. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. harder, designing the garden or doing that? Working to council is difficult yeah. because people also want a garden that might be exempt development, yeah. which is quite hard to design something where they want everything, mm-hmm. but they don't want to. That's difficult. Complying development, which is a much easier process, has restrictions, but you can do a bit, bit more with it. And DA, yeah. you can do more with, but you've got to go through council. And are you finding in the design world with gardens, it, is it a trend-based thing? Do things come and go, or do you sort of stick to your own um, flavor? Yeah, trends, like trends are difficult because garden and gardens and trends are difficult because you put a garden in and then you need it's got to look good when it goes in, but it's got to look better as it evolves and matures. And if you've got a trend and you put it in and then it starts to look good in five years and then it's out of trend, then you're stuffed, right? So timeless design always works best. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. And I I try to steer away from, from trends with, with clients. You might pick some colors that might be trendy, like grays, or maybe it might be like a red or something like that. That's in trend. Yeah. Stick to paint that can be changed quickly, but the overall layout and, and concept has to be sound in itself. Cause that'd be something that'd go wrong a lot. I'd imagine I, 
I know absolutely nothing about garden design. I'm like, mm. I don't put plants in my place, just grass, water, walk because <laughs> nothing else works. But, and up no, on the fences. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, the, it'd be something that would go wrong. I, I, I see a lot of gardens all the time and go, oh, that looks beautiful. I wonder how that's going to look in two and a half years' time. I wonder how that's going to look in five years' time. How do you manage that period? Is it just about well, It's all about uh, you got to get from the client how much maintenance they can give the garden. Yeah. Right, and that's got to influence the design. If mm -hmm. they say, I don't want anything to do with it, but I'm happy to pay someone once a week to come in and do it. Yeah. Then you can go nuts. Yeah. If they are, oh, I really want to be involved, but I can only give it you know, one one day a month or something. Mm -hmm. Then you've got to go down to more low maintenance. Yeah. And pick plants that are going to stay smaller and that sure. kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 So education and knowledge on plants is so important in a situation like this. Hey? It's everything. Plants yeah. is everything. Yeah. yeah. Plants and turf. Plants and turf. Well, yeah. turf is plants. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. But anyway, let's. <laughs> Can you not correct me, please, anymore? <laughs> um, Sorry. That's right. And um, the, with the, we spoke about this last episode, but the, the beautiful garden that you designed and built at Mifkus, do, yeah. you, do you get a lot, of, a lot of work from something like that? Is that the reason you do it? I know it's not the sole reason, but is that part of the reason you that's do it? So people go, it. wow, that's nice. Can I get yeah. one of them? Yeah, that's, that's part of it, uh, uh, getting your name out there and proving that you can do it. Yeah. Because yeah. I think that's why a lot of people do shows like Mifkis, obviously, isn't it? Is to say, hey, this is what I can do. Come and get me to do it for you. That's, that's always part of it, but yeah. it shouldn't be the driving force in it. Yeah. It should be the passion to want to show people something different and produce yeah. something out there that's completely in your own mind because every garden – will have constraints to it yeah. and you're building it for a client. So really when you're doing it for a client, you have to do something for them. You might you might not like what you're doing for someone, but you've you've got to do the do best garden you can for them and yeah. they've got to be happy with it. Is that <laughs> have you put you would have put something over the years where you just gone, I absolutely despise this, yeah. but you want it, so I'll do it. Yeah, absolutely. But if the client's happy yeah. and you've worked through some issues and it's the best that that space can have in their style, yeah. then you've done a good then job. Do it. And with your show garden, so again, referring back to Mifkus because that's the one you've, you've probably done most recently, mm -hmm. do you get many that come in and say, hey, build me that? Uh, people say, I really like that. I really like, say, the planting of that. Can I have some planting like that? Yeah. Or there was an element like I've got a shipping container I want to use or I've you know, got a monorail carriage I want to use, how can we use it or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. So you will get some weird and unique things that you've got to build in and build around. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I've got a monorail carriage in my garden. Actually, you didn't just make that I up. I didn't make that up, no. So <laughs> okay. a client a while ago, when the monorail was getting taken down, said, oh, I just saw on, on Sunrise that this monorail is being sent to trash. So I bought two container, two, two of the carriages, one's going to my place, send one to your place. And I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> don't really want it because you got if you pay for the uh shipping you can have it so it's just like oh okay it's like 100 bucks or something so now i have a monorail carriage monorail. his is much nicer than mine so he's like i want to do mine up so we got a car upholsterer to do all leather interior for it and we did like a tessellated tile floor put a fridge in it and some shelving oh, so you go in there and sit in there and yeah so it was like a scotch drinking den at the bottom of the garden so you walk through this part of the garden <laughs> it's got like a little button the doors open and no. then you've got like a all your fridge and scotches and, and glasses and you can go sit out there and enjoy the garden. And what does yours do? Mine's just an old monorail case <laughs> with, a, with a rose growing on it. I've got grand plans. Like I was going to make it into a potting shed and then I thought, oh, it's got built-in seats already so I really should do something like that. And yeah. then, you know, I haven't done anything with it. I've cleaned it out and that's about it. So when, when you design these gardens now, um, is are you still like – prone to going on site during the build and making sure everything's absolutely built. yeah yeah you, ha you have to as the designer you have to see the project through to completion yeah because i don't have in-house construction but the guy that does all my construction used to work for me we work really well together mm -hmm. so uh, he gets me in when i'm needed he knows yeah. when i'm needed and and so go in and advise the clients then and our last episode, we spoke more about your on-screen stuff that you're mm -hmm. doing. I don't think people realise that a 60-minute episode of Better Homes and Gardens doesn't take 60 minutes to film. Um, no. It's a it's a couple of day affair. So, how do you manage everything? Because obviously, you're, you're out on site filming. It's pretty hard to design a garden when you're sitting on site. On yeah, your phone and, somewhere, you, and so. you're not, you can't really be contacted when you're filming because you can't have your phone on yeah. either. So, there's a lot of that was another part of the reason why I had to scale it back to just design because there was just too much to catch up on yeah. in the mornings and the evenings after filming. So mm -hmm. it yeah. gives you a little bit more flexibility now. So Absolutely. so how do you manage things? Do you have a, a set thing or you just do it when you can? Just when you can. Yeah. And having a, a mobile phone now that can do it all is great for that. Yeah. You know, because sometimes it's just a one word answer that needs replying. So you can just do it then and there. Like 
Do you remember when you used to have to go and start a computer up and to, to reply to emails and stuff like that? It's just much easier now. I, d- I don't actually. No, it's because you're younger than no, me. <laughs> <laughs> Do these sketches say, say sorry, um, say you come in with a client, are you, are you a hand sketcher? Are you like an old school sort of artist where you'll draw it first or are you straight on the computer? I can't set up a computer page with a plan. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. Wouldn't even know where to start right. with Vectorworks. Right. Have no idea whatsoever. Right. So I'll go and I kind of visualize what, um, when I'm in the space, I kind of visualize how things will go and get an idea for scale and proportion. Yeah. And is what they're talking about going to fit or is what they're talking about absolute nonsense? And is there another way that it could be done better? Mm-hmm. So do that. And then I will take a scale plan and hand sketch in over so the top. You will draw. I will draw yeah. uh, to scale in, and I'm a terrible drawer as well. I'm not a very, <laughs> this is not a great advert for me, is it? <laughs> but I, if I can do line work to work out the scale and the proportion of where everything's going, mm. then I can give that to someone and they can put it into a Vectorworks file and make it look really nice right. graphically. And then you stand behind them and point when you want things yeah, changed. Yeah, and then I say, look what I've done. People go, wow, that looks amazing. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So, uh, but then putting the plant lists together is what I really enjoy. So yeah, right. that's yeah. where I really get into putting down what plants are going to work in what area and mm-hmm. how they're going to combine together. So beret, cigarette, drawing the yeah. <laughs> drawing the plan. Um, yeah. And then so you, you get it to the vector stage, you choose the plants, and then you just sit back and put it all together? Is that sort of what we're So doing? a concept package generally consists of the concept plan. Yeah. And normally they're quite large gardens, so then you'll split those up and go into more detail into different sections, yeah. which will be written through. Uh, there's a plant list of all the stuff with pictures of all that sort of stuff, concept right. imagery. So yeah. I'm thinking of a fire, big fireplace chimney here. It could look like A, B, or C, which then then you show it to the client, which one do you prefer? This is the one I prefer, and you can kind of discuss what can works. You, can you thing. draw them like a 3D thing so they can see what it looks like? Or we, it's all yeah, so then we used to do 3Ds well, not, in-house. Well, not you. Can someone you know do that? It's so much cheaper to get it done overseas. So yeah, right. we've got this guy we work with. He's a Kiwi guy, but he lives over in the Philippines. Right. And you deal with him and he just – you send him the plans and this is what I'm thinking and you get this amazing 3Ds back. Yeah, right. And normally a fly-through video and all that stuff. Yeah, cool. Which is what most clients actually – they don't really care about the plans. You show them a fly-through video and they're like – And that does it. Yeah. 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 So you can't draw, you can't use a vector program. And I'm a landscape designer. <laughs> yeah, it's scary. Go figure, right? It's quite <laughs> no, scary. No, you've, um, you, you've done some wonderful projects over the years. I know mm. if, um, I've checked out your website just recently, Inspired Exteriors, and some of the stuff you guys do is really, really cool. But is, is there one that really stands out for you? I know you've gone overseas and done a lot. Yeah. Um, all is the, there, is I love one? all the flower shows, but they're kind of strange in the sense that you're, you put so much planning into them you put so much effort into the design and making sure everything in the design sense works. Then you put all the effort into building it Mm -hmm. and it's super intense building it because you're there every day. Mm -hmm. But then after the show, it just comes down and never exists ever again. And there's something I like about that and something I don't like about that. It's a little disheartening in a way, is it? In a way, but then it's kind of nice to know that there was a moment in time that something existed that will never exist again. Yeah. So there's something about it that I obviously enjoy. Yeah. Um, but apart from garden shows, there was a garden we did in Singapore for the mm-hmm. Shangri-La in the lobby, yes. which was, that's yeah. like a, a, a big one for us that's still there. Still and, there, yeah. Yeah, still there and still looking great, which is which is pretty cool. So how do you get approached to do something like that? That was through Chelsea Flower Show. Okay. So I built a garden and one of the owners of the Shangri-La, their, their people, I guess, uh, saw it and mm-hmm. realized that I was born in Hong Kong and they're like, do you want to come back to Hong Kong and build a garden for one of the owners? So I went and built their private residence, yeah. and did a design, went over and did a bit of work in the garden there. Wow. And they said, oh, you're doing an all right job in this. Do you want to come and have a look at one of our hotels? Like yeah. We're doing a flagship renovation. So, yeah, one thing led to another and that's and, how we did that one. And so there's some pretty prestigious locations and that yeah. that comes directly from building a garden at Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. where else in the world is it taking you? Is it taking you? Um, I've done some stuff in France. I'm hopefully doing a garden in Singapore, the garden show in Singapore. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. And I suppose, like you said, the, the new role that you're taking on, it's getting you very used to working remotely with people. So you can yeah. do this kind of stuff with language barriers, with 1,000 kilometres yeah. difference between you. You can still get it done pretty effectively, can't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what um, the focus for you now, obviously TV and the on-screen stuff you do is taking up a lot of your time. But what do you see over the next sort of two, three, four, five years for Inspired Exteriors? You 
going to continue to sort of do what you're doing or is it, I know you've just yeah, gone through a Yeah, we've been doing quite now, a bit but... of stuff uh, in the commercial space, which I think mm-hmm. like doing some stuff at some hotels in, in Sydney, yeah. which is quite exciting knowing that a lot of people are going to use and interact with the space. And yeah. there's a lot of emphasis being put on exterior space and how how important it is really mm-hmm. so that's quite exciting um which we'll be focusing a bit more on going into that area but i, yeah. I just love residential landscape design mm-hmm. changes people's it sounds odd to say it but a good garden will change a family's life Absolutely. the way they use the space yeah. you know yeah uh you've houses and houses getting a bit of blocks are getting smaller so outdoor space is so important mm-hmm. and you've got to get it right because it yeah. will completely change the way you use your home uh-huh. uh, and it's nice to know that when you first meet someone that you know that by the end of the project and years to come, they're going to have a better life for what you're doing with them. Yeah, absolutely. And, and even, even in obviously my experience with this sort of stuff, doesn't compare to yours, but even things as little as re-turfing someone's backyard, um, it makes such a difference and people don't understand it. So I, I always say to people, if, if you're not happy with your outdoor space, Think about how much time you actually spend out there and it's always worth investing, even if it's small, in improving something, mm-hmm. um, e- even in the slightest bit. And it's it's not just from a personal point of view, but I think people also under, underestimate the value it actually adds to your place. Yep. Even if you're spending, I don't want to put numbers too much in here, but a smaller amount of money, it can change so many things yeah. for you. And, if you if you want to do something more drastic, then you can get someone like Inspired X Series in there yeah. and do it for you, and it it makes a massive massive difference. Yeah, I, that's I love Inspired X Series for that, but I also like doing TV for that as well because TV mm-hmm. inspires a lot of people to do stuff. Yeah, and Better Homes and Gardens is more budget conscious, so it's mm-hmm. like how can you get a similar look? How can you do stuff yourself for less the price? Yeah, but still gets people into the thing that we love, which is gardening, being outdoors. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and just just on. The stuff you did overseas is, is pretty incredible. But one thing I didn't touch on before, which I've only sort of just stumbled across now, is the first ones you did initially, you were involved right through, weren't you? It wasn't mm-hmm. just a design thing. How do you manage construction in a project on the other side of the world? It's Yeah, it's crazy because yeah. you've got 21 days to build a show garden at Chelsea. So yeah. you're away from your family. You take a team from Australia with you. Okay. A lot of the guys that were coming over were working for free. They just come over and do it for the love of it. So you're staying in these places and you're working from seven in the morning till like nine o'clock at night on one of those and you're doing it for 21 days straight. So yeah. it's super intense. Yeah. But an amazing experience that like, it's quite funny. We, as the Australians go over, Wes Fleming started this, you all wear the same uniform. So you're all in, you've got to wear high-vis. So we all had the same right. high-vis shirts on and like all the English were super jealous that we turn up in like these <laughs> high-vis outfits. Right? Gang. Yeah. And we were staying at this place in Chelsea. We found the cheapest apartments we could because it's, it takes a huge part out of the budget. Yeah. So like, great, found these apartments that are in walking distance to the show. We can stay there. All good, great, fantastic. We're down at the um, service station just getting food and stuff in the morning and this guy goes, what are you guys all doing here dressed up like that? And I said, oh, we're, we're from Australia. We're building a garden at the Chelsea Fire Show. He goes, and you're staying in the brothel. <laughs> I was like, uh, what, what do you mean? He goes, that place you walked out of on the top two floors. It's a brothel. I'm like, no, no, no. We're staying like, on, on the left. He's like, yeah, right. And walked off. I was just like, all the boys' ears pricked up. And I was like, oh, no. So who booked it? It was me. It was <laughs> okay. me. And it wasn't your first time in Chelsea, was it? Not the first time staying there, no. <laughs> no, it was the first time I staying there. I actually booked it to a, 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 a housing agent guy who's like, so, I know you're coming out, I can help you with cheap accommodation. So, so I was you, like, Great. you're building a couple of hundred thousand dollar garden at the most prestigious flower and garden show where, where, the, queen, where the queen goes to, <laughs> and you're living in a brothel. Um, admittedly, we only spent not much time there. Not much time upstairs. Because we were working. So um, I'm not, joking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry. An interesting story <laughs> yeah. for you. Did you meet the queen? I didn't meet the Queen. I met. Uh, That's a horrible segue, by the way. Yeah, too, it really is. How'd you come up with that? Yeah, no, no. Sicko. But, yeah. Um, God rest her soul. Anyway, <laughs> getting back to it. Um, <laughs> yeah. I didn't meet the Queen. Well, when I was there, she walked straight past me, so I realized I didn't do that great in the <laughs> yeah. judging. But yeah. I met Prince William and Princess Catherine and Harry oh, cool. when he wasn't so crazy. Yeah. Um, and so they, they turn up, right? They're standing at the garden. It's super surreal because they're like the most recognized people in the world. Right? Yeah. They're standing there and, and he's like, oh, this is quite delightful. He goes, this plant over there, what is that hedging you have? 
And I said, oh, that's, that's boxes. And Princess Catherine goes, babe, we've got loads of that back at our place. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, how weird is this? I'm like, your palace. You've got lots of boxes back at your palace. And they're just, it was just a weird experience. So did you have, was that the end of the interaction or did they like? I said, you can come and have a look if you like. And they yeah. were super keen. They're like, yeah, we'd love to. And then all the security's like, no, no, no. We can't do this. Come on, come on the time frame. And, yeah. yeah. It's a weird so, experience. So what's the what's the criteria to meet the Queen? You gotta You gotta do really well. You gotta do well. Yeah. How, how did you, you did okay over there, but didn't you? Did yeah, you? we got the second highest medal you can get. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. Which is I'm proud of it. Yeah, but, absolutely. Know, yeah. The ones you do in Singapore and that sort of stuff, do you ever use crews from over there or you always fly your own crew over? Normally use my own crew. Yeah. Yeah. Um we use we try and get help from a local landscaper just because you like Singapore is a crazy place. There's not yeah. the same, um, you can't go to the hardware store. There's no Bunnings there, right? There's yeah. no like DIY culture there. Yeah. So we found one hardware store like all the way across town and it was just crazy to try and, like we needed a core drill, right? So we're like, we'll buy a core drill from Hilti and they're like, no, we can only, you can only pick one up from FedEx because we've got to deal with FedEx but you right. can't just go and pick one up from FedEx. You've got to become a FedEx agent to go and pick one up right. because people yeah. just don't buy drills here. How do they like work and do yeah, stuff? Yeah, I have no idea how it works. <laughs> like when we're taking, and, and they only build for like a 15 year time frame. So yeah. when we're taking the lobby apart, the formwork they used for concrete, like there was Coke cans and bits of cardboard to like patch <laughs> okay. up the holes. And I was just like, Whatever what works. is this? And they're like, oh, well, it's only going to last 15 years and then we know it's going to come down. So that's fine. Yeah, bother. It's wild. And and with I look at Singapore and I know parts of Sydney and Melbourne are going the same way with the hotels and the like, but rooftop gardens yeah. and growing plants in spaces that plants aren't meant to be grown. Mm. How do you get away with that now? Like even with soil profiles, for example, on a rooftop garden, like yeah. how, how do Singapore you... is an amazing climate for plants. Oh, that's it, true. Because yeah. it just it's tropical, like it rains all the time, yeah. it's nice and warm. Like the the soils just it just all grows. Yeah. Like the horticulture to to Go over there and kill plants is is a very difficult thing to Have do. Have you put turf on rooftops yet? Uh, no, I haven't. Yeah, right. It'd be an interesting one. We get questions from I talk to landscape architects pretty regularly, and we often get questions on there. But what's the secret to to getting plants to succeed in a in an Australian climate on a rooftop garden? Is it all about selection? It's all about selection. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's hot. It's yeah. dry. Yeah, uh, and the. The soils drain really quickly because yeah. they have to, and they generally have to be quite lightweight as well. So there's not much to them. So Mediterranean plants do really well. Yeah. Um, drought tolerant plants like succulents and things do really well. But mm -hmm. then the trick is trying to make it look like a nice lush oasis that doesn't look dry. Yeah. yeah so yeah. yeah. It's an interesting line of work. I don't know what you do in general is interesting being on TV, but there's this whole other side here that people probably don't understand and probably don't realise. There's a it's it's not just someone who's like you said before, I'm just an actor, but it's not it's not just someone on TV, it's someone who really, really knows what they're doing and you've been doing this a, a really long time. And if again, if people want to get a more in-depth view of Charlie's story, it's a really interesting one and you should check it out on one of our earlier podcast episodes. But if people want to keep up with you and find out what you've been doing, where can they find you on the on the social pipes? On the social pipes, on the Instagrams. Uh yeah. Look, I, I sometimes post things on Instagram. I've yeah. been meaning to do it more and more. It's one of those things like it's just another thing you have to do, isn't it? Mm. And it's part of life these days. But yeah. Um, yeah, so Instagram would be a good way. Yeah, what do they actually have to search? So you like my name. You it's not that, that all that's what is. Instagram is, right? You just search <laughs> for someone's like name. That. I <laughs> thought it was going to be some fancy handle or something like that, what, but my, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what was my bio? Lived in a brothel for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't meet the queen. <laughs> Didn't um, meet the queen, but I lived like in that. a brothel for a bit. Oh, well, Charlie Albon, everyone <laughs> type that in, Inspired Exteriors, and you're able to check him out. You um, can check out Inspired Exteriors and Charlie Albon. See, that's instances. what I was that's looking what you for wanted? there. Oh, sorry, yeah. we just edit all that nonsense about brothels out. <laughs> that's where we go. <laughs> we'll go there. Uh, no, but it's a really interesting line of work, and the stuff you guys do is incredible. Um, I think the on. landscape industry is a fantastic uh, mm -hmm. line of work to be in, mm -hmm. and there's not enough people getting into it, but you hear that in, in every trade at the yeah. moment. But, yeah. yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, coming. I, I think a lot of our audience are like me, where they're very obviously turf centric, and, mm -hmm. and we don't hate plants, but we like turf everywhere. But from a totally different perspective, you can do some really really cool things with gardens. So I think it's definitely worth checking out. But um, great to chat again. Thank um, you for having it's me. It's always interesting. You're a very interesting person who does lots of interesting things. So um, it was cool, and we'll um, we'll do this again sometime soon. We shall indeed. Yeah.